This podcast is rated S for spoilers. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Half Past Podcast. This is episode 95, the movie review of The Predator. I'm Graham Ricks, and here with me is my friend and co-pilot, Ian Jones. Uh, this is episode number three, <laughs> uh, pandemic episode number three, I think. No, I think it's two. Isn't it number two? two? Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, time and numbers have no meaning for me right, right now. So <laughs> it's, I know today is Sunday because that's our podcast day. So yes, we all I know what day it is Sunday. at least and I've got a shirt on. <laughs> Uh, actually, everyone's probably going to hear the kids and and everything in the background. So, yep, it'll be a family podcast. It'll be episode. a family podcast. I mean, we're all, all tied in here in right. quarantine. This is why we're doing all these makeup podcasts. So it's going to be interesting to talk about the Predator, which came yes. out back in 2018. I think. Wow. Right? Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> the long-awaited Predator. Long awaited that that I guess you and I did not go and see in the theaters. No, we did not. I did so, not see the theaters. I'll tell you something though, <laughs> kind of a funny story about how I woke up this morning. Right. Not one of my finer moments, but I was nice. having a dream that Jurassic Park had reopened again, and this might have something to do with the contest that they're doing for charity. I don't know if you've heard of this, but no, they're mm-hmm. holding a contest and. The winner will get to get eaten by a dinosaur in the next Jurassic <laughs> Park film. So Chris uh, Pat is doing this contra- contest for a fan to get eaten by a dinosaur, which sounds awesome and yeah. is very freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I had this dream where they were reopening the park again, and I said, guys... Every time it goes like like you've done nothing different. Yeah. Like I was I was trying to talk them out of it and there were raptors everywhere. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I looked at one that popped out at me. You remember that scene Clever Girl where she, yes, the yep. raptor? Okay, so I opened my eyes and my wife's face was right there and I <laughs> screamed in her face. <laughs> and it was a scream. That was so loud and so bizarre that it's a sound I've never made before. It woke her up. She's like, what is your problem? And I'm never going to live it down. Because, because I had to tell her everything. And she's like, that's your reaction when you see me first thing in the morning? And I said, no, you don't understand. The dinosaur was right there. And then all of a sudden, you were the dinosaur. <laughs> I couldn't control the fact that I screamed as if I was about to be stabbed. Oh my god. (laughs) It was so crazy. And now that's one of those things that she's never going to let me hear the end of. It'll be years from now and she will just sort of slyly slip that in. That I I saw her early in the morning (laughs) and screamed in her face. And the thing is, at this point, all I can do is just deny that it ever happened. Nice. That didn't happen. <laughs> oh, man, that is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that never happened. Oh, I, I think man. you were still asleep. You were just, you were, you were dreaming that I woke up and <laughs> screamed in your face. That's what, that's how I remember it. God dang it, man. Oh, man. <laughs> That is hilarious, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, it would have been even better if it was the freaking dream. You just had the same dream as Alan Grant in, in Jurassic Park 3. Yeah, right. Hello, yes. Alan. <laughs> and then you Hello, wake Alan. up. And and it's... <laughs> yeah, but to his credit, he didn't do a crazy <laughs> scream. No. <laughs> I was like, damn it, you don't understand. It was a jump scare, and then I woke up, and you were right there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so bad. Man, oh, I wish I could have that scream on record. It, was, it would just, it would it just was, be played throughout the podcast. It was, so 
It was such a crazy scream that I don't even think I could replicate it. Oh, so that man. was a once in a lifetime. It would have been like the Will Wilhelm scream. The Wilhelm scream. Yeah. Would have been something like that. <laughs> it was along those lines. Really, really bad. Oh, that's great, man. All right, man. So let's just go right into Predator. You want to go right into Predator? I would love that. Yes. All right. So this movie came out in 2018, and I'll just go ahead and go through the synopsis. When a young boy accidentally triggers the universe's most lethal hunter's return to Earth, only a ragtag crew of ex-soldiers and a disgruntled scientist can prevent the end of the human race. Hmm. This movie was directed by Shane Black. That's not exactly what happens, by the way. No, it isn't. So you you got that off of a website. I won't name the website. Yes. Uh, But even that's not totally accurate. No, that's not totally accurate. So that's what they put out there. Yep. That is definitely what they put out there. Um, It was directed by Shane Black, who was a writer. I think he's written more than he's directed, but he's like... He wrote Lethal Weapon 1 and 2, The Last Action Hero, and The Long Kiss Goodnight, and many others. Um, He also directed Iron Man 3, and he directed The Nice Guys. And then you remember us, I believe we did a podcast on The Nice Guys. Do you remember that movie? I don't. At all? No. No, my memory is pretty awful it um, was when it was the movie that was set i i cannot for the life of me i cannot remember the two actors that were playing it but it's basically cops but it was set in like i think the 60s and it was uh it was actually a really good movie and i remember both of us looked at it and it's one of those movies when i was writing this thing up this outline up and i noticed that he uh i saw the nice guys i had kind of forgotten about that movie and it's one of those movies, one of the many movies that we've rated, that we've done reviews on, and we ended up, like, nobody saw it. Like, nobody went to go see that movie, and it was actually really good. And that list, since we've been doing this for, like, five years, that list has gotten pretty long, and it'd be kind of cool to do a, you know, forgotten movie kind of thing, and just, hmm. like, do either okay. a podcast or, like, a video because that's definitely one of them. I feel like nobody saw that movie. You know, Man from Uncle was another one nobody watched. That was really yeah, good. Yeah, that was a pretty good movie. Was, yeah. yeah, and then even yeah. the new Terminator movie again was pretty was pretty surprisingly good that nobody saw. So it's just like stuff like that. Um, he also was he was the actor in the original movie. He was one of the he was like the I think he was one of the soldiers, but he was like the ones that like weren't part of the whole thing or whatever but uh he was in the original predator movie also as an actor Hmm. this movie starring boyd holbrook as quinn mckenna he's best known for narcos and hatfields and mccoys uh he also was in the logan movie also Um, i definitely know him from narcos because i saw that whole season with him on it it's really good Uh, a couple seasons actually Javante Rhodes as Nebraska Williams, who is probably best known for Moonlight. Uh, Jacob Tremblay as Roy McKenna. He was in Wonder, and he was also in Doctor Sleep, which we also did a podcast on. And that is also on that list that I think that a lot of people didn't go see, but it's actually pretty good. Yeah, that is a good movie for sh- for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, Keegan-Michael Key as Coyle, and I mean, Key... King and Michael P. I feel like everyone knows it's uh you know from Key and Peel Mad TV. Um, he was also one of the voices in Toy Story Four. Um, Olivia Munn as Casey Brackett, and she was in the Newsroom and Attack the Show, Magic Mike, and then she was also in X Men Apocalypse as Psylocke, which was very clear that yes. the whole X Men Apocalypse debacle. Uh, yes. made it really clear i think that brian singer had no idea who psylocke was or <laughs> how to use her that is such a big fan favorite it is mutant. she is and she is. olivia munn is great casting for it so yes. like uh, i just don't under, i i don't understand how you you don't dive in and that's something that i hope that the mcu or you know that marvel corrects because psylocke is easily a character that you could have a whole series about on disney plus or you could oh, definitely yeah. do a standalone movie yep 
Like, Absolutely. Uh, her story, and she was always one of my favorites. Yeah, she Hands was, down. she was a good so. one. Yeah, it's one thing I always loved about X Men is it's hard to find a character in X Men that you can't find. Like you can't find it's it's there's so many characters in X Men and there's so many ones that are awesome. It's I think there's at least one character in X Men for everybody. And right. Psylocke yeah. is one of those characters where a lot of people like her and her character and her story. So it'd be like really cool to get a standalone movie for Psylocke because she's she's a really cool character. Sterling so came Brown as Traeger, who was in This Is Us, Black Panther, and he was also in uh, Hotel Artemis. Thomas Jane, who was as Baxley, and I didn't know because this movie came out a couple years ago, and I didn't know Thomas Jane was in this movie. I had, like, no clue <laughs> that he was in this movie, but he's from The Punisher is what I mostly remember him from. Um, he was also in Hung, the uh, HBO series, and I don't know if you've ever watched The Expanse. Have you watched The Expanse no, at all? I haven't. It's, it is a good little sci-fi movie or a TV Show, series right, that has yeah. been progressively getting better each season. And I remember I'm only up to, like, season three. I think it goes up to five or six now, but... It's like a good little thing. It's definitely one of those where it's more like political and like like sociopolitical. And so it's a lot of that government type crap that goes on in the background. It just happens to happen in space. So it's like it's that type of sci-fi as opposed to some of the other stuff that you'll see. But it's like a really cool little show. Alfie Allen as Lynch, who I feel like is barely in this movie, but he was in uh, Game of Thrones and John Wick. And of course, Augusto Aguilera as Nettles, who was in Too Old to Die Young. He hasn't been in much at all. And I feel like he's barely in this movie also. And then, of course, we have Brian A. Prince, who actually plays Predator. And then Gary Busey's son is in this. Uh, ja the Jake Busey. Jake Busey, right, yeah, playing Busey. the son of... The character's father played, in but Predator really two. getting no screen time whatsoever. Nope. So nope. Just... He interacts with Olivia Munn, I think, like a few sentences, <laughs> and he has like a moment when the Predator gets escapes. He talks to her again. He like mimes to her, and that's like it. And you don't know anything else that happens to him. Right. <laughs> it's just like, don't know anything else. And we're going to, like, like a lot of things in this movie, you don't know what, what the heck is happening. So let's, with that said, <laughs> let me start getting into the corks, man. You ready? Uh, I'm this? ready. Do you want to go first? I'll go or first. Or do you want me to go off? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I have a lot to say. Let's, about all right. This. Let's get you in first this time. Okay, I so, have a lot to say also. Okay, so here's something really petty, and I'm sure you would have jumped all over this too had you gone first. But the first thing, and this is sort of, this is almost chronological, but the Don Julio product placement really <laughs> drove me up, up a freaking wall. Like, like I was just like, why is this shot in the movie? Like, I know the shots in the movie. I mean, I just, I don't understand why they would even want to be associated with this movie. Like, maybe the Predator <laughs> franchise, sure, but I mean, what's... Uh, like the way that it's framed, the way that it's framed looks like a commercial. It does for Don Julio. So I just I have a huge problem with it because there's no way it was worth the money. <laughs> My biggest problem with the Don Julio thing, it's you know I have forgotten about this, but it definitely when I saw this movie last night, I was just like that annoys the hell out of me. And the thing that annoyed me the most is that it's not a because of how it's filmed like you're like you said it looks exactly like an ad yes so it looks like the ending of an ad but the thing that bothers me the most is in an ad they usually put the don julio down and they put it down perfectly the first time but it almost looks like he puts it down and adjusts it for the camera. And that's what bothered me the most about it. Because <laughs> it's like this little, he puts it down and he kind of like moves it a little bit more. And it turns the label more towards the camera. And I'm just like, what the hell? And then I just watched. Well, let's just take this back a step further. How is our product going to be used? Well, 
in sort of a <laughs> passive, passive aggressive <laughs> sort of way, he's going to use it to down something, to down an alien device that he's going to poop out later. Yes. Right? Okay. So, so <laughs> I just, uh... I don't even know where to start there. It's like, <laughs> well, we're not happy that this product placement's in. What's, what's the biggest backhanded way to sort of do it? And yeah, it's, it's just one <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would want to burn your throat and also try to swallow a gigantic metal ball yep, at the same right. time. Yeah, that's terrible. So, so there's that. That was sort of like the very first thing. Yep. Um, the other thing, which is which is something that I that I sort of started catching because I actually want. There were so many quirks that I had to watch it twice. Yeah, like I watched it in back to back days because I was just like, oh my god, there's so much to talk about here. Oh yeah, but like the treatment of dogs in this movie, like does Doctor Brackett ever get her dog back? <laughs> you know, like and you start looking at all the other ones, like there was kind of the stray that had the collar that came to the yep that came autistic to... boy. We don't know yep. what happens to him. Nope. We don't know what happens to the alien dog that nope. had turned into their friend. There was yep. just a lot of these loose threads. And then I started thinking about Dr. Brackett and I was like, where the where did she get weapons trainings from? Exactly. Well, like she just yep. like she regurgitates her backstory and it has nothing to do with weapons or joining the army or she's nope. a biologist. Yes. And that's one of my major quirks. And I'm like, wait a minute, is Doctor Brackett ex-military? And why? And why is she so dedicated to keeping this alien <laughs> in her possession? Because she's right. like, she because it escapes, and she immediately goes after it. And they're just like, Jake Busey's just like, don't let him get away. And she's just like, not my alien. And just like keeps going. And I'm like, what? She's a she's a biologist she's a scientist what is what is happening it's <laughs> is killing she all doing... these marines with weapons yes yeah it, it's like it's, it seems like is she ex special forces or something they don't explain anything about that she's just badass i don't know i mean it was so ridiculous and like her backstory is i sent a letter to the president and they saved it like as yeah. a little girl that was that was it they saved it and so then yeah. when I became a biologist, they just cross reference and boom. And I'm like, that can't be how it happens. No. That can't be how it happens. <laughs> they do not save letters to the president from, you know, every six-year-old girl in this country. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't make any sense. But no. it's like that sort of the character background and a lot of the exposition is just regurgitated in like two sentences and it's yes. like that through with everything throughout the movie and that was yes. something i was going to talk about later on but that's just it sort of doesn't bode well like it's, it's the difference between showing and telling and yes. it, it's uh, it's just so it's so bizarre that so many explanations are just sort of thrown out there on the fly while they're dealing with other stuff oh yeah yep um I, I don't under like I feel like there's two different ideas for movies here like one of them is a predator versus predator the other one is yes. and and maybe it's even three but a, a human predator hybrid yes okay it feels like that should be its own movie and that should be what who the movie is about it shouldn't be about this father son story Yep. Which to me d feels like it doesn't belong anywhere near this franchise cuz that cuz that feels yep. like a PG-13 watered down version that they then realize, yep. wait a minute, this needs to have blood and cussing, so we're going to do two takes of everything and then do CG blood yep. in post. That's that's kind of how it started feeling. Yep. You know, like I like I felt like there were probably two versions of the jokes because they weren't sure if they were going to make a PG thirteen movie or an R movie, and this is an R. Oh, it's but the story an R is is almost like you know a, a, a PG thirteen. It's almost like they figured out halfway through fans are gonna are, are gonna boycott this movie if we don't 
do it like the others. So yes. that was something where I felt like there were two or three different stories that they should have focused on if they were going to if they were going to do it this way. It's almost like they crammed in a trilogy's worth of stuff that they that they could have done full complete movies on into oh, yeah. this one thing. And so then everything feels rushed like it was sort of thrown together. And a prime example of what you say, which is what if I just like, I was just like shocked <laughs> when I saw this, but one of the things you're explaining is there's like this bullying aspect to this movie where they're bullying this little autistic kid and he gets bullied throughout. And then he decides he goes out in Halloween wearing the mask. And so he's wearing the gear and everything and he starts getting bullied again and somebody chucks a rock at him and they chuck the some kid at, at a second story window throws a rock at him to make fun of him and that kid gets blown away yeah, he gets kill. blown yeah, away and you're just everyone like everyone else in the house <laughs> including everyone else in the house and i'm like what did i just what did i just see i, I just like it seems like they wanted to keep this like bullying thing that was probably the PG-13 aspect, but then they just want to just, like, murder every kid that happened in that situation. And he's like, what did I just watch? That was such a crazy scene. I was like, it was one of the only scenes where, like, my eyebrows raised. I was just like, what the hell? Who wrote Who wrote this into this movie? Right. <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. Ugh. Um, You know, I mean, and so that's kind of the other thing, like, the one predator hunting another i mean they kind of touched on that in the movie predators which i'll talk about in a little bit yeah that there are these two different kinds but now there's this weird giant cg version and i just yeah i felt like i wanted to know more about this other predator who moves in a very different way i mean he moves human and it almost doesn't look right when you're seeing how he moves and fights and everything but I was looking really forward to a predator versus predator um, standoff, and it, like once they fight, it isn't even a fight; it's just over in no. a snap. Yep. Because there, because there is no fight, and yeah. that kind of leads me back to like this. This movie, in a way, felt very meta. Like they, like they have the two masks from the first two times predators have shown yes. up there. Yep. And so uh, and so obviously um Traeger is a part of, is has taken over whatever the team was that was investigating uh the predators from part 2 from the second predator movie. Yeah. But I felt like Traeger should have been the villain of this movie and and especially when you have like an actor as good as Sterling K. Brown. Yeah, he's a good that's actor. That's kind of what they were... Um, I felt like that's what they were setting up. And, and they needed to just push the envelope. And I felt like if there was tech, if there was armor... Uh, like if, if that was the, like the silly little ending that they had... If that was really the way they were leaning... He should have already had that in his possession... I just felt like the order of the order of things were backwards. This should have been his chance to to get to get predators and we really don't know what his intentions are because they had a predator alive and in the lab. They had yes. all the technology. He just wanted their sh I guess he wanted their ship. But yeah. you know, it, it's just like god, I I wish they would have developed it more because I I wanted more specifics, and I really felt like, okay, this needs to be the bad guy. He actually needs to be the bad guy of this. And I just, I, I felt like they wasted an opportunity because they set him up to really be a jerk. And then yes. he's gone just like that, and, you know. Yeah, and I totally understand what you mean because it, it's one of those things where one of my problems I have with this movie is I saw a lot of potential in... in the, in the writing and in the characters of this movie but it is such a freaking mess that it, it just it, it's just awful how they went about doing everything because this could be a very different movie you could you could potentially do a movie that's similar to the 
original Predator movie, right? You have all these soldiers here. They all have backstories because they all have PTSD. But if you take that seriously, you can get a movie that's similar to the Predator movie and then have it end with the death of the Predator, where he finally beats him at the end. But having all these characters that you would care about because they have all these issues and seeing them die one by one, this would that would be very similar to the original movie, but I think it would have been a better movie overall. Or you could have a movie where the main character essentially is the Predator because according to the, how this movie is, he's trying to help humanity. He's trying to help them by giving them something that they can defeat the Predators with. So with that said, it's like, well, why aren't we getting why aren't we getting that movie? Yeah, why <laughs> just, aren't we getting a predator centric like, movie now? Yeah, it would be a yeah. predator centric movie at that point. And then you could kind of go by you could have these other characters in there, but for the most part, if it generated on him, all you would need is you'd basically have when the predator escapes, you could potentially have him like not really killing anybody. Because that's the other issue I have with this movie yes. was like, he's, he's no. like, his whole point is to save humankind, which you have no reason, like, why? You have no reason why he would want to save humanity. But he wants to save humanity, and he is just eviscerating everybody in the, in the building. Like, everybody is getting killed. And I'm just like, well, what? What's the motivation? I don't understand why you would have why you have a character that wants to save humanity and in the process just eliminate everyone in sight. It yeah, just, I, I get it that makes he's probably no sense. pissed off, right? That he oh got yeah, taken. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. It doesn't make any sense. Like if that's no. his goal, he's then also attacking the very same people that he wants to protect, and we yes. just we don't get any sort of motivation for him. No. Yeah. And Not at all. Yeah, his his body count is is pretty staggering. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, at some point, uh, they stole an RV from some poor schmuck, and we yeah. don't get to see that scene. But I but I feel like <laughs> maybe that's on the cutting room floor somewhere. But they just sort of roll up in an RV, and I'm like, ah, I would yep. love to see that. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Uh, so the predators can create a human hybrid, but they can't have it have human blood. It's got to be neon green <laughs> and maybe the most recognizable and easy, easy to spot thing. It's oh, just yeah. Like, I was like, ah, it's still neon green <laughs> on black pavement so they know right where the damn yep. things are going. Yep. Um, you know, I, I felt like... Um, what the first two Predator movies did and what one of the sequels, the Predators one, the one with Adrian, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody, yeah. What those films did so well is that they, they kind of layer and, and peel back the reveal of the Predators. So yes. it stays with the human human characters, but, but that's really the right way to do action to do like an action suspense horror you know that's yes. like the way that you build it and this one totally uh goes the opposite way and oh yeah it, it almost this to me as i was watching it i felt like god this is really like a marvel take on a predator movie like like i felt like this is this has really been altered and sensationalized i think to pander to other kinds of fans yeah and i think that that's a problem and then and so that's what i was feeling as i was watching it the first time and then for it to end with essentially tony stark armor i was like oh my god like <laughs> i mean well yeah that's this yeah. is exactly what they've done now yes um yeah. so I, I just that part of it for me is is disappointing yeah. Like, if you're going to do a Predator movie, let's do, you know, let's do a movie that Predator fans are going to love. Yep. And, you know, then get everyone, you know, there are other ways to get everyone else on board. But that's just what it felt like to me with, okay, we need the father-son thing in here. 
you know, well, why? Like, why does that need to be a part of it? It doesn't. And none of that has ever been a part of any of the Predator movies. It's... It's just like a weird thing to have in this movie. It doesn't make sense in just in the franchise as a whole. It, it just doesn't make sense to have something like that in there. Now, you could do a different movie like that. And again, I wouldn't have a problem with that if, if it was that type of movie. But it would have to be... It would have to be that type of movie in terms of it would need to be closer to the original Predator movie. Like I was saying, if you follow these... PTSD soldiers and not make it so damn silly with all of them and actually right. have like they have problems and issues and then seeing them get picked off one of my one and then having the main McKenna referring to his son and like you know so on and so forth you could have all that in there and then have him finally take out the predator or even you could even have it finally take out the predator with the help of his son who is able to figure stuff out because he's autistic. So, you know, it, like you could have that movie, that movie's is there in the writing. You just need to write that movie, <laughs> but that's not what this is. And I thought that's, that's, I thought that was one of the things that really annoyed the heck out of me about this movie is you have all these PTSD soldiers and it's just silly. Like they're just ridiculous and like silly. And like this movie I feel like it's it has so many scenes where it wants to take itself seriously, and then it has way more scenes where it's just this is just a, a Michael Bay funny ridiculous movie is what it feels like right, to me yeah. is what it is, right. and and I and I think I absolutely think in the writing there's a good movie in here somewhere for sure. I think there's a couple, you know. I think a Predator centric one like we were talking about would be good. Or one that's kind of a redo of the original one is another good movie there, you know? Or even, like you were saying, having the Predator versus Predator movie. I mean, that's I mean, a good yeah, movie, too. And there are original ideas in this, which is a good yeah. thing, because we've yeah. all been really hating reboots. and But in a way, this feels like like rebooting a franchise because of some of the choices they make and made yep. and i just feel like they took instead of having the one idea and building off of there and rebuilding a world they threw all of them together and so you yeah. don't really have the payoff of every single thing and you do have a lot of really head scratching things like i love the idea of you know these guys are the loonies so why don't yes. we have a movie that's based around that where you think that they're all crazy and then it turns out that, you know, they're being hunted by a predator that they've had contact with before. Yep. So that would be a great a great take on a predator yeah, it movie. Would. But yeah, absolutely but, would. But then when you have two guys who are, I guess, friends in, in a love-hate sort of relationship, look at each other and shoot each other. Yes. Uh, that feels like a Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Lethal Weapon 6 kind of thing <laughs> to happen. And it's, yes. it's so over-the-top stupid that... Yeah. It just undermines... It undermines a lot of the the foundation and it was already sort of a shaky foundation because the movie moves so quickly and, it does. and usually i think pacing is a good thing but when you're just doing you know a blink and you miss it exposition on on things i i, I think that that's a big problem oh yeah for sure so that's it uh, that's a lot this is probably the most quirks i've had in some time <laughs> uh, i um i mean i've said my quirks throughout while you're doing yours but one of the other things i wanted to mention is the i the traeger character and yes. uh, i really dislike this character mainly because i it, it has the same problem with first of all i have no idea what organization is doing this that seems like it's clearly some like government secret organization right uh that is investigating all of this and they're behind the scenes and doing all that with that said there's like 
no way you would have a character like Traeger, the head of this. He's crazy. He's <laughs> just like, there's no way that this character would, would be like the head of this government organization. He's like not level headed at all. No. <laughs> and, and, and it's just like, which is why it makes sense to me when you're talking about if he was like a villain and then maybe you get more with him and you like figure out more with his backstory about why he's the way he is and why he is in that position. Maybe that would make sense, but you're just giving this guy that's the head of like a secret government organization that is off his freaking rocker. And I'm just like, how is this possible to have this character here? And so it just bothered the heck out of me the whole time. Every time he has like a reaction to something, it's like really over the top. And you're just like, this guy is like, Nowhere near level-headed enough to be ahead of anything. It's just, <laughs> it just like these are strange heck, times, I mean. though, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> we do have people who are the heads of stuff who you're like, there's no way that they. Yeah. Do. Right. <laughs> so the other thing, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say was that uh, one of the things that bothered me is. Basically, when we talked about how this movie goes, this movie is actually pretty decent all the way up to the Don Julio scene. And then after that, the movie immediately starts going downhill. And it starts with with the Don Julio scene because in that scene, he goes to a guy to send a, a package home. Who in the hell sends secret? alien technology to his home i'm like why would you send this package it's just like made no sense whatsoever that you would send this cat package like back home and you're just like you have like a wife and a kid there and you got this mysterious you have no idea what the hell this technology is and then you're going to send it home? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And then the other thing that bothered me about that is, is there is way too many people using random alien technology that they have nothing, they know nothing about whatsoever. I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) what what is happening with all of this? And so there's like so much of that in this movie that I was just like, oh my God, what a mess. This is a freaking mess of a movie. (laughs) It's, I really think that they did not, I think they had a lot of, good ideas throughout this movie that was kind of cool that we've already discussed but putting them all in there at once just makes a mess of a movie and I don't think they thought this through at all I don't think this movie absolutely doesn't feel like it's thought through whatsoever and and that really disappoints me considering the last podcast we did was Into the Spider-Verse where everything is thought through (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it's like completely the opposite and, and i just like oh my gosh yeah man. even it, though when you look at the core concept of into the spider spider verse it seems like a bananas yeah kind of thing but yeah oh yeah you know the you know the writing and the planning was just spot on for it so it yeah. all works yeah works so it out. all works and this one is completely the opposite problem <laughs> And that was all my corks, man. So you want to get to the likes? Yeah, let's get into the likes. Okay, you want to go first or what, B? You can go first. All right, so I didn't have very many likes. So, ah, okay. um, as I was saying, I thought this movie starts out pretty good. I think the movie's good up to the point where the Don Julio scene, because then you start getting, everything starts going off the rails. Um... But one of the things I thought was really cool is I liked the ship design and I liked the like space effects of them like ripping through space and like coming in. Like all of that stuff was really cool. And, and I was just like, I would love, it was to the point where I was like, I would love to see a Predator versus Predator type movie. Like you could get a mo- easily get an entire movie off of that chase. You know what I mean? Like him going after the predator that's trying to save humankind and getting a predator centric movie. You absolutely, that would be a really cool movie. I was thinking a predator movie in space, 
would be real interesting to do when I saw all those effects and the ships going and interacting with each other. And I was like, that's pretty freaking cool. And I, and I really thought that was awesome. And you can easily do that movie and then do this movie where it ends with him saving uh, humankind by finally giving him giving humans what they need at the end of the movie, which is the suit. And then the third movie could be the suit and then taking out the predators. You have a trilogy right there. I just wrote it. <laughs> and it would actually be not bad. <laughs> it would not be that bad. But I thought that that was really cool. Um, the only other thing I have to say is I thought some of the banter between the soldiers was, was fun. Um, I think most of the time when they interact with each other, it's just like silly and ridiculous and it's just not, it's not great. But every once in a while they'll talk to each other and I like it. And and that's like all I got, man. Yeah. I think my favorite part of this was the loonies, but, uh, but in a way it ends up being detrimental to the rest of the story. Yes. Um, because it, it takes things like, you know, things like yelling, get to the choppas. And I was just like, why the hell did they like, I understand why, but, but still, why the hell are they doing? Like, why are they saying things to, uh, and you know, this isn't on really any of the actors, you know, it's, it falls entirely on the right, the the writers and the director of the movie. But they kept doing little things like that that really take you out of the movie because it's not supposed to be something like Deadpool. You know, you're not supposed to wink at the camera or the audience. And there are a number of those little things in there where it's like, well, you know, well, wait a minute. That's not, you know, that's, you know, that's a line right out of the first movie. That's, you know, that's this, that's that. Um, Yep. So I, I really have to have to say that I I think my other than some of the stuff with the loonies which which I enjoyed, I think the one thing that I think I I probably like about this movie is that you have an autistic kid who gets to have his disability but also gets yes. to save the day. Yeah. and and show how important he is and I and I think that that's incredibly cool to see we don't see that enough in movies no. I, no. I, like I think that there should be more of that and it's a shame that it shows up in a movie that is not appropriate for kids no. to see so it just it's it's weird to me that we don't really get to see that that enough um and yeah, I, it's just it's something that I would like to see happen more in, in maybe like an animated film, or you know, you're talking about trying to to be more inclusive to the yep. point where you're ramming it down everyone's throat every chance you get. Yeah. Uh, in terms of casting choices, so it's just bizarre to me that I can't really think of another movie where there's been a character. Uh, like this recently no you know and usually when there are char- when there are characters that's like uh, that have a disability it's like uh uh like biographical movie it's like the the king's speech or a beautiful yes. mind something something like that so yeah I mean, anyway the that's other... that's it really yeah the only other time period we have from what I can think of of an autistic character is uh, was actually the Power Rangers movie, and that was the only time I could think of which we also did a review on, and uh, it's it's definitely like an interesting thing, and I, I think like I definitely like that aspect of the movie, but like we were saying, you know, that's that's a different movie, and what it's what's disappointing about this one because I feel like there's a lot of there's like. Like we're saying, I could, we've named off several different movies where this could have been that. And it just isn't. It's it's all of them, and it's a mess. And, <laughs> and it's bad, man. It's it's so rough. Oh, it is a rough movie. It's horrific, though. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so with that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and rate it, and I'm gonna say skip it. I mean, it's skip not it. like uh, it's not like you can go watch this movie anyway. But I right. I don't even I have a hard time even having somebody watch this movie on HBO like I did. Like I don't, I can't even give you a reason really to to even do that. So. <laughs> Yeah, just, skip it. If you haven't seen it, then just continue to not see it. It's, 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 a, it's I'm glad a we're getting these. I'm glad we're spreading awareness <laughs> far, far, far after the fact. But still. Yeah, it, that movie's bad. <laughs> All right, man. You ready to sign out then? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Anybody wants to contact us, you always have us on the home of the web at halfpastpodcast.com. Like us on Facebook. We're on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. We're on Stitcher, Libsyn, and TuneIn. And you can always email us at halfpastcast at jmail.com. That's halfpastcast at jmail.com. Tweet us at halfpastpodcast. I like to thank everybody for listening, and I thank everybody for their support in this while we're doing this quarantine series of movie of movie reviews and it's going to be interesting we got quite a few more to do while we're all waiting for movies to return <laughs> to us <laughs> it's rough it's rough waiting for movies to yeah. return i'm just going to the uh movie theater i i really miss going to the movie theater too and you know it's funny that you even mentioned that because man this just came up because i was talking to jackie yesterday and you know that whole controversy with Universal Studios, and it started with AMC theaters basically saying they're not going to show Universal movies anymore. Have you heard about all this? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just saying that when you, you say that you miss going to movie theaters, but this is one of those things where like videos on demand going on and Universal saying they're going to show more of those on demand and I I would hate, and I I mean, we all know that movie theaters have been going downhill ever for years now because they're just not making enough money. And I would just be so saddened by the day if that ever comes when movie theaters aren't in existence anymore. Like, that would just hurt my soul because <laughs> i am a movie theater guy it's the reason why i do the podcast it's the reason i love going to see movies and i love especially doing some of the summer blockbusters which we're missing all missing out on this year and seeing going opening night or even just like that opening weekend and you get people reacting to the really fun stuff that happens when you're when you're watching endgame and you have you know cap finally get Mjolnir in his hands yeah. you know you're like you hearing the crowds react that's a part of the movie going experience and so i would just like wanted to say just because you're talking about like miss going to the theaters and like this new controversy that's popped up and i'm just like so terrified i'm just like god i would hate for this like this whole thing to be like another nail in the coffin for movie theaters I mean, I guess time will tell, but I'm thinking yeah. that people are going to be so interested to get out of the house. Yeah. And we'll see. You know, I, yeah. I think that they're going to be just fine. You know, the and the other issue really is you, a lot of these films that we like to review, you really need to see in a movie theater. Yeah. You just, you can't yeah. replicate the experience at home. You know, unless yeah. you have so much money to do your own private little screening room, but just it, yeah. and it isn't the same. You know, that's you know the the laughter crowd of a crowd, or yes, you yeah. know, being shocked, or you know, seeing something so cool, and you just you hit the nail on the head. Those moments are not there. You know, that's yeah. that's part of the part of the experience. Yeah. Um, even all the way down to, you know, uh, the sound design. Oh, yeah. You know, look at how different yeah. sound design has has been for movies, and oh, all yeah. of that goes away. All that, all that work and uh, 
and progress goes away if it's not screened appropriately. I, th I think Universal's mistake is because they sort of made a general statement that AMC yes. took it out of context. I, and I think their whole point is when we do round two of this and everything shuts down, they're going to do more movies on demand. Yeah. Uh, but if they think that what happened with Trolls is always going to happen, um, I, I, I think that's a huge huge mistake that's a huge presumption to make yeah it is and i think the the thing with trolls world tour um i think one of the advantages to the success of that one being on videos on demand is one everyone's stuck at home and probably tired of their kids watching frozen 2 over and over and over yeah. again and so they're like i'll pay the 20 bucks to get so we can watch something else and then I think the other advantage in in terms of having the video on demand is I find it hard to believe that you can do things outside of like family type movies because family type movies like Trolls World Tour, you know, those animated movies like that, I can totally see watching those at home and you would actually save money because it's really expensive to take the kids to the movie theater. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. And so like, even at 20 bucks, it's like the, well, that's not even that, that bad at all. Especially like when I go to the movie theater with Jackie, even when we get snacks, it's, you know, that's about how much it costs, but that's with snacks, <laughs> you know? And so, when you take kids, it ends up being fifty or sixty bucks, maybe even more, well, depending on yeah, what you get. You know, more yeah, all usually more. Snack packs. Yeah, and stuff. you all getting snack packs and stuff. So, I could totally see how it'd be better for that. So I could see a market for movies like that, but I find it hard to believe to see the next Marvel movie. Like I know, on like going on demand, and seeing you know? Black Widow. At, yeah. on your like it's just I don't, yeah. I don't know, it's yeah not gonna have the same punch to it no it won't it really won't so i just thought i just thought it was funny that you brought that up because i did want to talk about this but i had forgotten about it but it definitely is something that was on my mind this past couple of days when this whole thing has popped up and i'm just like this better not be the end of my movie theaters i love them <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah well, this is the Half Past Podcast. I'm Graham Ricks. Jonesy. See you next flick.